I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday. In last week's video, I asked you to provide a plausible mechanism for this transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video, try this mechanism, and see if you got your answer right. And make sure you're subscribed so that you never miss one of these Mechanism Monday videos. This specific reaction actually has a special name. It's called the Bergman Cycloaromatization because you're making an aromatic cyclic structure. A hint to begin is that we're using H nu, which basically just means under UV light. Oftentimes, when you see H nu, it's an indication that we're forming a radical species. In your organic chemistry class, you would have seen H nu plus Br2 to make a bromine radical. This is another such example where we're forming a radical by breaking a bond using light. And these pi bonds contained in this triple bond are actually slightly weaker, which can allow for thus to form the radical. And one of them, one of the shared electrons in that third bond is actually going to form that radical. So one of the electrons will go over here and the other electron will be used to form a new carbon-carbon bond between the other other alkyne. And this is also going to give us our second radical. So following this transformation, we've actually closed our ring because we have formed a new carbon-carbon bond between this carbon here and this carbon here. And notice that that's going to give us one, two, three, four, five, plus the sixth carbon, which I skipped over here, that is gonna give us our six-membered ring, which is how we got to this stage. Now, importantly, the substituents coming off the since our new bond was formed between these two carbons are going to be that R4 substituent and that R3 substituent. And on this side, we're gonna have our R1 substituent and our R2 substituent. And importantly, we're still left with the pi bond here. We still have the pi bond between these two carbons, and we still have the pi bond between these two carbons, which I labeled four and five. Now the radical location is adjacent to those, so that is gonna place a radical at this position and a radical at this position. And this is why you actually need to include this molecule, which contains these two hydrogen carbon to hydrogen bonds, because from here, this is such a reactive species that you can actually make this carbon hydrogen bond and form a radical at this position. And the reason that this is possible, I'll go on a little side quest here, is because when you form a radical, let's say at this position here, and you have these adjacent double bonds, what you've done is you've created an allylic radical. So at this position, what can happen is that you can undergo several different resonance structures, which provide some stability. And what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna move about that radical by forming brand new radicals at different positions. So in this case, what we've done is we've actually moved over the pi bond and created a new radical at this position. And there are several other resonance structures which help stabilize that radical. But back to this molecule, once we have done this, we've created a brand new carbon hydrogen bond at that position. And we are still left with all of our other substituents along the other carbons and all that remains is a single radical at the bottom position and our aromatic ring in between. And all that needs to happen now is another reaction can occur where we form a brand new one of these stabilized radicals by forming this carbon hydrogen bond in this process, again, regenerating a new radical which can be stabilized through resonance. And once this takes place, you form a new carbon hydrogen bond at this position, and it's actually how you get to the final product. Again, this is called a Bergman cycloaromatization. For next week's video, I'd love to see you propose a mechanism for this chemical transformation. I'd love to see your answers either as a comment down below or even remix this video with one of your own. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on a Mechanism Monday. I'll see you in the next video.